Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to the final segment of Youth Matters where we're discussing the generation gap and the challenges that arise as a result of lack of understanding between parents and children. Now in this last segment what we want to focus on uh, is how to actually close the gap. What do we need to do to ensure that our parents don't misunderstand our children? Our children don't also uh, develop a culture where they feel as though their parents aren't of value and they don't understand them as well. So how do we bridge that gap? As always, this show is for you. And this show is all about how our community um, can benefit. So what we want is we want solutions from you. So please do phone in the numbers on the screen or email us and I'll read them out. And uh, please do tell us what you think. Uh, I'm delighted to have uh, Ridwan back, thank you for coming back on the show. And also, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Hamza Sheikh, who's a business analyst and is uh, representing the youth in this final segment. So thank you for coming on to the show. Now, Ridwan, um, in the last segment, we spoke about the challenges where sometimes our families, um, they seem to prioritise family members, extended family, back home without prioritising the needs of the family in the UK. Okay, so for example, there, are, there might be uh, cases where they're sending money back home when they should be investing it in their family here. So what's, what's your view on that? I think it's a very interesting point and we have to remember how parents put a lot of emphasis in sending money back home because it's important to them and at times that protected them from a lot of things because that priority was theirs and they would assume the children would automatically take that responsibility and it will protect them and motivate them to achieve more. But unfortunately, if we're going to keep that motivation, that's not really going to motivate the youth. So we need to find contemporary things to actually engage with the youth to make them think that, okay, look, this is what's important to me and motivate the parents. The parents need to have that open communication and actually make them realize the benefits of actually giving sadaqah, giving charity, possibly even taking them to Bangladesh or the native country to appreciate that actually wait, where the funds are being used. So it becomes more real rather than foreign. What do you say to parents who sometimes obsessively uh, send money back home without realising uh, the need here? For example, Nasir spoke about like the student loan. Some children are going, not going to university because they, they don't want to fall into interest and they've got their own personal reasons. You know, and as opposed to investing in that, parents are spending money back home or building stuff back home. Where do we, uh, where do we strike the balance? The balance is, ironically, you just mentioned it there, when it comes to building things back home, you have to decide where your roots are. You can't be hard, one foot in, one foot out. Because right now, you've got children who are growing up in this country, and if you don't invest in their future, in them being guided towards the straight path, towards the correct morals, the Islamic principles, then really you're leaving your children into the wilderness without any kind of protection. Sure. Thank so you. it's a dangerous. Okay, thing. thanks for that. We've got an email from someone who's, uh, who wants to remain anonymous who says, uh, lack of understanding and respect leads to gaps widening. Even Islam teaches us, and I think this uh, hadith was mentioned previously, where first, year, uh, first seven years play with your child, second seven years discipline, and seven, a third seven years be friends. These help to keep parent and child bonded. I think this is the key. Our parents lead difficult lives trying to survive in this country and didn't address our emotional needs, causing a rift and us turning to friends for that comfort and reassurance. So, um, Hamza, th th this particular uh, view obviously feels that, you know, it is difficult living, uh, living in this country. And, you know, for some of our parents who might not have had their primary education in this country, it is to a certain extent when they come here, it's about survival. Yeah. And, you know, they're not able to give that same emotional support as we would like. You, you know, you're, you're part of the Gujarati community here in the UK. How would you, you know, we've spoken about some of the challenges within the Bengali community. What would you say are some of the challenges within the Gujarati community when it comes to the generation gap? So the challenges in the Gujarati community, Pakistani community, Bengali community, Moroccan, Algerian, doesn't matter where, what community you're from. Because you migrate from somewhere you originate from and you've mm -hmm. come here, you're all living in the same environment, same society, so you're going to be affected by the same things. For example, a Pakistani brother might be affected with something to do with girlfriend, same thing with Gujarati. So everyone's affected by these same issues. It's because you're all in the same society, if that makes sense. Yeah. You haven't got actually, like for example, you haven't got Islamic principles which are <coughs> govern you, or you haven't bonded your relationship between Islam. You've actually come into society which is kind of foreign to you, foreign to our parents, just because they came here as uh, migrants, for economic migrants to become, have a better life because of what's happened back home. 
they've come here and tried making it better for themselves. We've came out, we're all like, I'm myself, I'm first generation. So my parents, they just see it as the, the reason they came here. A lot of the parents that come here is just to make ends meet. But myself, I'm growing up here. I'm seeing a lot of clashes between what my parents have taught me. So my parents have taught me, believe in Islam and make sure your criteria is halal and haram. Right. But over here, when I got in school, I'm seeing different things. Oh no, do what you want. You've got the freedom to do things. So I think this is a major clash that we have. It's not, it doesn't matter what community you're from. But would you, how responsible or how much blame, should we be blaming our parents? Should we have a blame culture? Or should we just take it as, you know, they might lack education, Islamic education as well. Also, you know, education of being, you know, understanding the British mm -hmm. society. And as a result, they are, because as parents, surely they're trying to help us as much as they can within their capacity, right? Yeah, 100%, I, w I personally wouldn't blame the parent because you have, if you understand the mindset of the can parent. I, can I come back to you? We've got a caller on the line. Is okay. that okay? That's Sorry. Uh, Salaamu Alaikum, caller. Wa Alaikum Salaam. Uh, thank you for calling. How would you like to contribute to the discussion, brother? Um, I just wanted to add on to what that brother Hamza was saying. Go ahead, brother. Okay. Yeah, you can, you can uh, share your views. Sorry? You can, you can speak. Am I on live? Yes, you're live, brother. Okay, um, Assalamu alaikum. My name is Mara Abdul from East Ham. Um, I just wanted to agree with what the brother Hamza was saying, um, that we live in this society and we're all like second, third generation. And the reason why there's a lot of clash between our parents and ourselves and there is a generation gap is all due to the fact that we're living in a sort of alien environment to us, um, where there is not like Islam over us, there's no Islamic principles. I just wanted to say Jazakallah khair to that brother Hamza for making that point and shout him out because he's the one that got me off the road and brought me to the deen. That's all I wanted to say. That's fine. Thank you, brother. Okay. So uh, I think the caller obviously is speaking about uh, the importance of uh, having right type of knowledge and, and, and direction. Now, Hamza, coming back to what you were saying, what we were saying about not blaming our parents, but understanding their kind of maybe lackings due to their circumstances. And as, as youth, I think, I think it's very important that we do appreciate that, right? What's your so, view on that? So we have to understand where our parents are coming from. So a lot of people have had the discussions before we're talking about oh, our parents just want us to be doctors, X, Y, and Z. It's because you have to understand why they actually came to the country for. It's because they came out as economic migrants, and that's always in their mind. But now, alhamdulillah, a lot of the youth, they're all clued up, they're seeing what's happening. We, do we actually fit into the society? We're alienated. I'm wearing a thobe and a beard, so it doesn't really make sense. What am I doing here? Am I, is my roots here? So our parents have come here. We can't really blame them because they have this view of you know what, if we're not here, they're going to kick us out where we're going to go. Because we haven't got anywhere to go nowadays, have we? Mm -hmm. If I try to go back to okay. India, sure. there's a lot so, of corruption. So. Okay, now th th thank you for that. Um, but that's just, coming back to you, you know, with all the social ills that exist in our community, you know, drugs, gangs, um, people, people uh, believing in things uh, that they hear, this consu consumer-led society, can you blame our parents for sometimes um, being overly protective, especially during our teenage years? Well, no, actually, you can't blame them for being overly protective because it's completely understandable. I've got a one-year-old child myself, and if I see he's going to put his hand in fire, I'm going to grab his hand, I'm going to take it back. But at some stage, you've got to give them the tools necessary to go out there, venture out into the wild and look after themselves. And I don't think that's necessarily happening. Mm. So, I mean, one of the things that I think parents should do more of is develop that very good relationship with their kids early on. I don't think that's always happening. Um, I'll tell you what I mean. Um, everyone knows, everyone can see there's a wayward youth, youth culture here in the UK. Okay? And when you go to schools, for example, normal public schools or madrasas even, you see rudeness, aggression, bad behavior in general, yeah? But where did that all come from? I think it all begins at home. Home is really the first school. And if parents take a laid back approach to parenting, if they think, I'm gonna give them food, I'm gonna give them clothing, I'm gonna give them a place to live. If they think that's enough, then they've really misunderstand, misunderstood their role as parents. Mm, no, thank you uh, for that. We've got another email. Once again, a uh, person wants to remain anonymous. The negative aspects of having the gap is parents cannot protect their children like before, especially as technology has developed, internet safety, bullying, Islamophobia. They don't understand. We must help them. Maybe community leaders need to address this better. So that's quite, we did speak about that in the first segment. Now, Ridwan, you work with families, you work with the youth uh, in your day-to-day -day life. 
how important is uh, effective parenting to ensure that you know those gaps are reduced? Very, very important. Because what happens is, really and truly, um, I'm currently working for an organisation, Head Start Education Centre, and they've organised a new department where they're giving um, a youth facilities. And where are the parents who are actually approaching the schools and saying, look, can you increase that facility? Because they're originally doing um, primary, um, preschool, nursery and primary education. But because the school saw the need, really, where were the parents that actually approached the schools and said, look, um, th there's a demand. The brother mentioned about madrasas. Really and truly, at a certain age, when the child is 15, um, that's it, you've, you've learned enough, you've done enough hifs, your, your tajweed is, on, is to a certain level. But now when that teenager needs parenting or needs education, they've actually been neglected. And parents need to look into them and say, look, okay, I need to reinforce some good morals and good education. And if they're not able to do it, then they need to bridge the gap with possibly youth workers with other means with the Islamic ethos to actually reinforce the positive outcome that they desire. Okay, thank Shall you. Um, as we said at the start, Hamza, you know, this, this segment is all about trying to reconcile, trying to ensure, you know, trying to reduce that gap. Look at, look at ways we can move forward, preventative measures. Um, so, say for example, and we, we've got a lot of viewers watching this, <coughs> if there are young people who are watching this where they think, my parents just don't understand what what my feelings are towards certain issues, yeah. yeah, whether it's family related, outside the family. How would you advise a young person to go and speak to their family so that it's not confrontational and you know it's respected and, and so we can move forward in a way everyone feels valued? So one of the issues is that we see that a lot of a young person feels very neglected, he can't speak to his elders, he thinks, oh, if I tell them about X, Y, Z situation, they're going to get back at me. The thing is, you have to understand, at the end of the day, they're your parents, they will understand you. If you can't really speak to them, you've got your imam at the local mosque, which you can go to, you can speak to him, you can speak to other elders, your uncles maybe, explain to them the situation and show them that you don't actually want that. Like, for example, if a friend or someone has a drug issue, they're addicted or something, they can actually go speak to someone and shouldn't feel scared about it. And it's mostly towards the elders as well. You shouldn't shut off the youth because they're coming to you for um, help and you should actually provide them a solution. Sure. Um, Shazad, coming back to you, I think, um, you know, you're a parent yourself, mashallah. Now, you know, if, how would you, how would you, uh, you know, if your, if your son or your daughter, and, you know, inshallah, you have more kids uh, moving forward, how would it help you? Because I guess as parents, sometimes, you know, we want to educate our children, we want to share our wisdom, our knowledge, but sometimes, you know, we might not understand the circumstances that they are living in. How do you think our youth, once again, it's the same question as I asked Hamza, what kind of things, what else could our youth do, or how could they change their approach or adapt their approach to try and ensure that their parents uh, understand what it is that they want? This is a difficult one, and I've had some I've had experience of this as well. When I first became practicing, my parents were quite worried actually. Uh, they saw me fasting, they saw me praying out of nowhere. This is a complete turnaround to the guy that they saw before. Sure. So my dad was a bit worried. And what really helped was bringing in another elder, someone who's quite respected and well-known in the community to speak to my own family, someone who they couldn't really ignore. And you can explain that, look, there's nothing to worry about. This is what's happened to your son, and this is where he's going. And it's a good thing overall. That really helped. You found that to be very useful. That no, really no, helped. That's really good advice. And, Brother Rizwan, what, um, you know, coming, coming back to you, um, I think also we have parents watching this. And how important is it that if our parents don't know the answer, or if... You know, if, if they don't know the answer or they're in the wrong, that they're humble enough and they're, you know, open enough to say, OK, listen, I might not actually know the answer to this. And so that what that does as well is it shows that, you know, it's not about whether I know it or not and we're going to go ahead with this. But the fact that I'm also reflecting and I'm trying to better myself, how important is it that our parents also sometimes show that side to their children? Showing that side may come across a bit ingenuine. The fact is, 
they have to accept the fact that that is the case, unfortunately. Um, the generation gap does exist um, with all the points the brothers have mentioned. It's about knowing that and now how do I go about resolving it? Mm. Um, if I'm not able to communicate or my son daughter isn't able to um, relate the day-to-day -day issues that they're having, then making sure that they've got the, they're surrounded by good influence. We need to make sure that the children have got good company because it's very important. We have to ensure that, okay, where are they getting their education from? Where is the, well, who are they surrounding themselves with? What are they watching? So right now, you, as parents, you may not necessarily have as much of an influence as you initially want, but then you have to slowly get that power back. You have to slowly get that influence back, and that takes time, and that, make, that comes from a conscious decision they have to make. Sure. Um, so, once again, uh, coming back to you, Hamza, you know, there's a... Should the youth, do you feel that the youth need to do... You know, it's all easy. It's, uh, you know, what seems to be coming across is that our parents need to do more. Okay, so if they don't have, for example, knowledge about a particular topic, they need to, I guess, as parents, uh, preempt what their children might go through and educate themselves and, you know, attend classes and so forth. But should it also not be the child realizing some of the limitations of their parents and trying to kind of cover for them to a certain extent and trying to kind of uh, meet them halfway and almost try and support them as well? Yes, 100% I agree with you as well. So the parent plays his part and his child plays its part because the parent can't do all itself by itself. The child has to come in, say, oh, the mother can't do this, so he comes help us out. For example, you see a lot of people nowadays, they're very rude to their parents. Yeah. For example, we grow up, oh, you know what, if you're a rebel towards your parents, you're seen as someone that's good, or someone cool. But is that what Islam says? Islam says treat your parents nicely, isn't it? With kindness. But what happens is that the child should see where the parent can't actually go any further. For example, if the parent is lacking, let's say, Islamic education, he might know a bit more, so he should teach his parents. They should be open about this. In the house, they should have a very good Islamic environment where they're open about issues, where they can speak to each other. It shouldn't be very sealed and put a lid on it, that one person, they're living in a house and one person does his own thing, the other person does his own thing. No one actually communicates unless they're sitting around the dinner table if that makes sense. Yeah. So everyone so should what, be open. So Hamza, what kind of things can we, you know, can the youth do with their parents to try and get to know their parents better? Because if there is a generation gap, mm. okay, uh, it, it comes down to not appreciating, understanding our experiences. How do we kind of try and come together so the experiences that we share together and create that bond yes. is much more powerful? What kind of things can we do? Because it's all good saying, yeah, we need to do stuff as youth and parents need to do mm. stuff. What might that look like? So one thing that could happen is that... So what, what is it that you, for example, so or your friends do right, one, that one, really helps? One personal one would be something that, where well, when you're with your parents, you spend quite a bit of time with them. But the other thing is that understand the situation, how they're thinking as well. It's, it's not always like two-sided, you know what I mean? You have to understand, going to their shoes, how, why are they thinking like that? Why are they turning to the X, Y, and Z? And then from your side, you should always reply on an Islamic basis. You should show that your foundation should always be Islam. And so if they tell you to do something haram, you should back away. But if they tell you something to do Islamic, then you should listen. That's how it should be, isn't it, with mm. your parents? But you should always, like, one practical solution can be is that it's the most, it's the most minute things at home yeah. that can actually change personalities at home, for example. Just doing small things like doing the dishes and stuff like that yeah. and respecting your parents and your elderly can actually go a long way. We don't really see this. And then other things we can push towards is mm. that in the mosques or in the local community, we have brothers that are working together to help local families which are, let's say, disunited or have problems or the youth can't, like, if the youth can't speak to their parents, they can mm. go to this older brother, which is uh, well known in the community, you can speak to him and he can go speak to their parents. Sure. So one thing is uh, like an organization or a youth group that comes out in their local area sure. that supports youth when they have these problems, if they can't go back to their parents. Sure, thank you. Now, Shizad, Hamza spoke about, mashallah, you know, the fact that even doing something as small as clean the dishes can is a step forward. And I think sometimes we, we, we see situations where people are doing so much outside the house and trying to help others in the community when within their own household, they're not investing that time to try and resolve 
you know, their immediate issues. So I think, and sometimes our, would you, would you agree that sometimes we have youths who, mashallah, have that, have that energy outside the house, but within the house, the patience, that time, that commitment isn't, isn't, isn't uh, prioritised. What's your take yeah, on no, that? Yeah, no, I absolutely agree. We shouldn't be these dual personalities. We should have holistic Islamic personalities, people who do what's required of them at home and also outside in the community, isn't it? We should fulfil both obligations. Truth is that your family, are the ones who you're close to and they know everything about you yeah so if you're for, for example not praying your salah or if you're rude at home and then you're doing all this dawah outside they're going to see something wrong with your personality mm -hmm. and whatever call you're calling can, to outside they're not going to be drawn to it so that's a really good answer can i come back to you yeah. to carry on with that we just got a call on the line salam alaikum caller well it's salam bro uh how would you like thank you for calling how would you like to contribute to the discussion um i'll i'll contribute uh through the um I'll give ten pound, brother. If that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you don't have to pay anything, brother. We just want to hear your view, all right? So make a contribution in terms of an opinion, brother. But the money we'll accept as well, <laughs> all right? That will go to the youth fighters account. But uh, what would you like to say about the topic uh, regarding uh, the generation gap? I just want to say that, and also I just want to sh shout all my brothers out um, from East London and whatnot, and for all the great work that they're doing. Sure. So, brother, what's, what's your opinion on the generation gap? The generation gap? Do you think our parents and our children, is, is that closing or do you feel as though it's expanding? If, if I'm honest with you, it's a, it's a two-part debate, if okay. I'm honest with you. I think we've uh, lost that caller. Uh, sorry, Shazad, so if you want to carry on with what you were saying. The point made to me. Uh, so, so you were talking about um, how, you know, sometimes within the household, OK, um, we, we don't prioritise that. And sometimes people have dual personalities when they go out. They're doing a lot, but within the house, they're not building those relationships. Yeah, so we, we need to be these complete holistic Islamic personalities and we can't be, uh, we shouldn't have these dual faces. Yeah, I think That's it's really point, important. Yeah. So once again, I think we've got people at home who, inshallah, you know, they've come to a stage where they watch the show and they're thinking, all right, I need to do my bit. So the children are, you know, young people are watching this thinking, I need to do my bit. Parents are watching this thinking, actually, I need to do my bit as well. So how do we get them to come to a common understanding? What kind of things can we do to reduce that generation gap? Because it's almost like, you know, we, we want to do something about it. What do we do? So one small thing was, you know, even doing the dishes. But sh socially, what kind of things could be done? Like, what about, say, going out, doing stuff together? What do you think? Yeah, definitely. Um... Because we have to remember, you may be on the dining table, everyone's eating together, but then everyone's on their phone, mm. <laughs> unfortunately. So it's about... Um, so one might be to put the phone away? A rule where you don't have the phone out when you're eating? De definitely. Because yeah. um, that, 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 that opens up room for communication. Because we, we have to make the difference between quality time and spending time. We, I think families, they spend an excessive amount of time with their children, at times possibly, or the child is just at home and they feel like, yeah, I'm with my children. But that's not quality time. You haven't actually spoken to them. And the children need to um, take the opportunity to actually engage with the parents as well. Because fair enough, there's a lot of things that they don't understand um, with the current events and the current technology. But then the youth need to make that effort. Could, to I, could a youth, for example, sit down with their parents okay, and say, look, this is Facebook. Okay, a parent might be completely um, unaware of what Facebook is and just say, are you aware that, you, for example, Skype, you can Skype, you can t uh, see your relatives in, in other countries, why have you tried that, I'm talking to my friends here. You know, see, for me, you know, that's closing the generation gap, right? Could we not utilise the tools that we have in front of us? That's it. So, but then you have to motivate the youth in doing that. And what I found the motivation would be, when's the last time that the parent actually thought to themselves, okay, this is something my child likes. Um, let me join them at that activity. Um, it's all good, they're on their phone. What are they on their phone? Watch that YouTube program with them. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Mm, I know it's mm. this, no, we're no, all allergic really... to Netflix, yeah. but your child is watching it, so find out what they're watching. You don't have to engage them in a conversation about, okay, just the fact that you've actually sat down and you've watched that program with them, they, they would actually notice, they would appreciate that. Sure. And then the child, that'll give the opportunity for the parents to actually think, okay, what is my child watching? And secondly, the child can engage and say like, okay, mm. have that conversation. Sure. So, um, Hamza, coming back to you, so, uh, you know, do you go with your, say, uh, <clears throat> with, your, with your family, what kind of stuff do you do outside the home with your family? Just normal other 
families do. They go out okay. to eat and stuff like that. Sure. But so you go out to eat. So you and, 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 and does that actually help to kind of build relationship, uh, get a better understanding of expectations? Yes, yeah, it slowly does build a relationship because you're doing activities together. But just speaking on the generation gap, because the topic's about generation gap, I don't really think it should be called generation gap. It's because us as youth, we've grown up in this society and our ideas clash with our parents. No, but I think, if, if, if you know what I mean. Yeah, but what, what we're trying to do is, we, we, we acknowledge that, we yeah. accept that, you know, uh, their experience might have been different, but yeah. if, we, if we just, if we don't try and reconcile, come together, yeah. Uh, what we will find is that there will be more issues, and I think there's a famous saying where it says, "By the time you, you know, by the time you you realize your father was right, your son thinks you're wrong." Okay. okay. So we're obviously uh, what that's trying to say is that you know you realize what your parents are talking about when you have kids yourself, and obviously you, mashallah, being young, uh, <laughs> you know, brother Shazad spoke about you know as a, uh, having a child and trying to start thinking like that so i guess what i'm saying is i think we, we we have to somehow come and find a common ground otherwise what will happen is we lose out because our parents lose out and we as uh, young people lose out as well not of course. myself i wish i could say <laughs> that about me no of course coming to a common ground is agreed mm. i absolutely agree with that so for example you could do things like going out together yeah. or doing like even in like ramadan let's give an example is going to Tarawi with your father yeah. taking That's your father taking nice, your elderly yeah. take your uncles take them with them is making sure that the, the common ground for the youth and the child and the elder on the same, yeah. instead of he's on something, he's thinking about something else and the parents thinking about something else. If you both come together on a common ground, then you move forward. Because if, if your parents are on something else, if they're thinking, okay, look, I want to bring up Islamically, and then you're thinking, oh, you know what, I need to be Western, I need to be more liberal, you're going to have a clash straight away. Mm -hmm. You're not going to come up together. It's mm -hmm. going to be, he, your parents are going to be forcing something on you and you don't want to do it. Mm. So but spend, spending that time so that we get an opportunity to understand one to another. Understand, better, yeah. Yeah, understand each okay. other's basis. So really briefly, because we're coming to the end of the show, Shalad, you know, what would be your last kind of uh, comments, few comments, uh, brief comments on how we can reduce the gap? What would be your advice to the watching audience? Oh, um, in 30 so seconds. I think in 30 seconds, yeah. <laughs> I think it's a bit unfair if you ask uh, if you ask the kid to do everything. If you, if you don't yeah. invest in your child and then expect them to be bona fide Muslim, complete personalities by the end of it, yeah, then that's not fair, isn't it? You need to do your part as a parent, and especially in the early years. But likewise, the child he needs to acknowledge as he, as he gets older, not as a small child, as he gets older, he needs to acknowledge that he Thank has you. some responsibilities Thank towards you. his parents as well. Thank you. And with one really quickly, because uh, we're um, about to run out of time. I think basically make halal easy so haram becomes difficult. Really, yeah. that would be my advice to him. Okay. Thank you very much. Now. Uh, Thank you to everyone who's phoned in and also people who have emailed over. I'm sorry if we haven't been able to uh, read out your emails, but I think the message is quite clear. Both from parents and from our students' side, we both need to make the effort. We need to make sure that we're doing what's needed so that overall as a family, as a family unit, we're effective. And, you know, it's not about creating this blaming culture, but trying to work together because at the end of the day, you know, the love between a child and a parent, it's there. And what we need to do is develop that, let that flourish. And the only way that will happen is if we have uh, effective communication in place. So thank you for watching. Balat and we will see you soon. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.